Welcome to this episode of Social Distance Television, the show founded during the COVID-19 scare to make our students more aware. More than 5,000 American deaths have been attributed to COVID-19, and we have seen a 3,000% increase in unemployment claims over the last three weeks. There's no historical blueprint for any of this. That is why we think it is so important for us to hear from one another. I'm Elena Pittman. And I'm Devin Handy. And, and you're, you're watching, watching SDTV. SDTV. On today's show, we'll hear from Sox News, look at some inspirational photography, hear from the Fear Desk, and finally hear from our social archaeologist, Dr. Boswell. But first, let's see what's in the news. Distance learning will take a more structured shape next week. Beginning on Monday, April 6th, elementary school students will log into their classes in the morning and wrap up around 11 o'clock a.m. MCPS will then hold a countywide lunch break to allow time for students to travel to one of more than 40 lunch locations to pick up a free meal. In the afternoon, middle and high school students will log into their classes. While some teachers are scheduling structured time for students to check into their classes, others will be holding virtual office hours to allow students to ask questions regarding pre-recorded lessons or assignments. The schedule of each school will vary slightly, quote, based on the needs of the community and schedules will be posted on school websites. School officials have said that students are not expected to have a full six hour school day. For elementary school, it may be as little as one and a half hours each day. Elementary students will ease back into the MCPS curriculum, starting with math and literacy lessons. And at all levels, teachers are working hard to finalize grades for the third marking period. According to recent research, social distancing works. California and Washington State were some of the first states to impose stay-at-home orders. The states continue to see new cases, however, there hasn't been a spike in the number of cases like there currently are in parts of the East Coast. When you're in the media business, which I guess we are now, it's wise to see what's happening on other channels. With that in mind, let's see what's happening on Sox News. So Bill, what do you have planned this weekend to beat the Corona Blues? A surprise birthday party for my 85-year-old mother. Ah, that sounds special. Yeah, we got the spare key to her house, my brothers and cousins and all their families all hiding when she gets home from her cardiology appointment. Surprise! Just precious. Can't wait to see Mama's face. Such a thoughtful son. Well, that's all for today. Stay safe, America. It's always great to catch up with Sox News. To capture a bit of the stark reality beyond our front doors, we sent our photographers, before the last shelter in place rules, to capture some images and juxtapose them next to life before COVID-19. Here is what they found. Living at our apartment complex has changed since the coronavirus pandemic. A sanitizer has been added to the elevator, although we have, are supposed to stay home. Our front desk staff is no longer at the building's entrance. To protect its front staff, our building's management has placed it inside the manager's office with no direct access to residents. On a Saturday afternoon, this part of Wisconsin Avenue would have been packed with cars stretching all the way to Stone Ridge School. This is Giant's West Bar location. Shelves empty of major products such as sugar, flour, and oil. No toilet paper, no tissues, no sanitizers. Safe way is protecting our elderly and, and at risk members. Special shopping hours. On Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. are the new shopping hours limited to our elderly and at risk people. Car wash. Those were the days. Now, no need to move as we stay at home. Tenting Diana Ross's concert at the Kennedy Center. Now concert venues are shut down, no musicians standing close to one another, no attendees. Parking space is packed nowadays, what with all the people staying home. So, now that we have all this time, what should we do? 
You can make smoothies, spend time with your family, make dinner together, draw, paint, knit, or crochet. Free up your artistic side. Quarantine doesn't have to be boring. Use this time to focus on your hobbies, whatever they may be. And last of all, but certainly not least, don't forget the homework that's collecting dust in that backpack of yours. It's important to keep up with schoolwork so that none of us fall behind. Effective March 16, 2020, our lives in Montgomery County have changed. As students, we now attend a school online within our homes. We distance ourselves from all those around us and we avoid people. The bottom line is that we fear the unknown. Thank you, Felipe, Yabasira, and Siham. It's hard to get caught up in the negatives, so let's take a step back and meet up with Eva from the kitchen, virtually, of course. Today we're making pasta. For this you'll need 200 grams semolina, 200 grams flour, 4 eggs, 1 tablespoon of salt, and 1 tablespoon of oil. Pour the semolina and flour onto the countertop or into a bowl and make a little well in the middle. Add the salt and oil into it and then crack four eggs in and mix until it's smooth and all together. Once it's nice and smooth mixedly or kneaded together, you need to rest it for about 30 minutes. Once your dough is rested for 30 minutes, take it out and knead it a little bit more and then flatten it out. Once you've rolled out your dough to a very thin strip, cut it with a knife into whatever shape, form you want it to be. Folding the dough in half and then half again, I then started cutting small little strips to represent the spaghetti noodles that we're making. Bring the water to a boil with plenty of salt, and then take your noodles and flop them in. Thank you, Eva. Before COVID-19 decided to interrupt almost every aspect of our lives, the students behind the Museum of Contemporary American Teenagers, also known as MOCAT, were hard at work creating a whole new exhibit called Fear Itself. The show must go on, and the topic of fear is even more relevant today. Let's pass it over to Daria and see what the organizers have planned. Hi everyone, I'm Daria Taspinar and I'm a BCC junior. And with the help of Social Distance TV, I want to introduce you all to some amazing student artists and creators behind the art exhibit, Fear Itself. This art exhibit is based off of one simple concept. We need to hear from teens about what they are going through right now. The need existed before COVID-19 had a name and the need is even greater today. We have no clear way of knowing exactly what teens are going through right now, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. The exhibit itself, like so many other things right now, is on hold, but shortly after the state of Maryland gives the green light for large gatherings, it will open. In the meanwhile, let's not let this wonderful creativity go wasted. Today, let's meet Natalia Kotinska, a talented student artist who created a film about her struggles regarding fear and addiction. I asked Natalia a few questions about her film and some of her other artwork. Um, it's always a fear. It's either a fear of, um, you know, not getting enough or getting too much or, you know, or um, getting caught. Sometimes we're really not getting caught. I mean, it's just a constant anxiety and uh, more than that, it is, it is emotionally, you know, wrecking. So I think I, think I just wanted to portray my own fears, honestly. <laughs> I, I always felt like um, when they're portraying addiction, it's never in a love-hate way. Um, it's mo it's mostly either the love way or the hate way. And I really wanted to show that um, you know addiction is kind of like a like a like a relationship that you have with someone. I mean, it you know it takes your time, it takes your it takes your money, it takes your you know it's like it's it's like if you had a second person with you and when you stop you have to go through different stages of um dealing with with the fact that you no longer can do the things that you wanted to do whichever addiction it is um so yeah my idea was just to show like the the love and the hate and kind of show it from another angle as if it's addiction that let go of me instead of me letting go of addiction because um because that's honestly kind of what it was. <laughs> addiction gives you up rather than you giving up addiction. What a powerful and honestly frightening idea. So without further ado, let's roll the film. Some Breakups Are Harder Than Others by Natalia Kotinska. Please leave a message. 
um, addiction. My dearest, I, I am calling today to say farewell. I'm calling today because you have become a burden that I, I can no longer carry. I want to thank you for making me who I am today, for all the lessons you taught me <laughs> the hard way. You, you took so much from me, you know? Yet I loved you, I did, with all of me. <clears throat> you know what they say, love is blind. My love for you was unconditional, blind, as it turns out, one-sided, but I loved you. I put you first, no matter what. I miss my friends that you seduced. You beautiful beast. How we all loved you. I miss them, my love. For you took them away from me forever. You know, sometimes I wonder why it is me that you let go. Why it is me that got over you after all that we have been through together. I mean, I thought you never would. And I'm calling to let you know that I'm doing well. There are days when I miss you, yes. But you have no idea how hard it is to get over you. I mean, your love is addictive and it ran through my veins. The withdrawal from your love hurt me from inside. It made me sick and made me scared. It sucked all the hell from me. I mean, I was weak without you. You hurt me, my dear. You did. You nearly took my mom from me. <laughs> how could you? And you keep seducing the people I once loved with your smile and your promises of happiness. And all I can do is watch you do it. But I know it's my fault. I know. I know I should have never went on that first date with you. I mean, you had me. The first time I felt your love, I was yours. I don't regret. I just wish that I had listened to your ex-lovers that warned me about you. But I was blinded by your beauty. Two years have passed now that we haven't seen each other. Two years that I am recovering from all the wrong you've done. I am happy now. I threw away your things. I burned the letters you wrote me. I, I buried everything that reminded me of you. And now, without you, I am happy. So, please, stop calling me at night. We all have different anxieties when it comes to times like these, but it was great to hear from a few students. Our future archaeologist may still be in high school, but that does not stop him from reporting the future. Anyway, here's Dr. Boswell to help teach us about life BCE before the coronavirus era. <laughs> like before the dawn of the social distancing era. Well, my dear friends at SD Television have asked me to enlighten the isolated masses. So today, well, I figured I might just share with you one of my many, many findings. So, my isolated audience, let's talk vacation. Hope you enjoyed that last impromptu trip to who knows where, because more than likely, the location's closed. Beaches? Closed. Ski lodges? Closed. Disney World? Closed! It's been bloody abandoned! Now, the fallen mouse kingdom is overrun with Disney fanatics, uttering nonsensical incantations from these strange books. Thankfully, they don't seem to do anything. My team and I managed to find a fallen monorail track and followed it until we found the Magic Kingdom. There, we were able to scavenge several strange artifacts, for which I, I know the purpose of not. <laughs> Whatever they are, can't be worth much now. Either way, we were able to recover some video footage, which we'll show to you now. Oi! Which way to Disney World? I'm lost as hell here! I don't know where I'm going, man. I'm lost. Does anyone know where Disney World is? I just got out of the airport. I don't know where I'm going. My GPS ain't working, man. Damn Google Maps. More like Bing Maps, man. It doesn't work. Hey, buddy! Watch where you're driving! People these days. Hey, there's the castle. I think we're almost there. Another yellow light. Gotta stop. Wait for it to take off. These Google Maps ain't what they used to be. I think we made it. This looks like a stop. Oh, 
Never mind. Next time you drive. I don't like this. Does it look good? Does it look good? What? Oh, we're back. <clears throat> you know, maybe those people were crazy before the whole social distance thing. Look, I'm not here to spread all doom and gloom. It's true that perhaps things will right themselves and we'll return to the way things were, back before the whole social distance era. We may even see those parks open once again. But for now, we keep those cherished memories to heart. And in the famous words of a sage man named Walt Disney, never fear the shadows. They simply mean that there is a shining light nearby. That's all the time we have for today. This has been Sociology. I'm Dr. Buzzer, signing off. Finally, we want to clap out for a group of people making life in our community a little more bearable. Today, let's clap out for first responders, continuously working to keep ourselves and our community safe, especially with the added component of heightened health risks. That concludes this episode of Social Distance Television. Remember to stay safe and check MCPS TV for more.